which Exhausted. is why it's perfect that we have our first guest on the show. He's a board certified sleep specialist and the founder of Sleep Fix Academy. Yes, please welcome Dr. B. Joy John. Welcome Thanks in. Thanks so Thank, Thank you for having me on your show. Oh my gosh, your first book, it's number one on Amazon right now. It drops today. It's called Nobody's Sleeping, one of them. Seven proven strategies for better health and happiness. Yes. Congratulations. We are Thank so you. happy Thank for you. you. Now, you've been researching sleep for decades, and you've come across a lot of different sleep disorders. What do you say are the most common that people are battling? The first thing is insomnia. Either you don't fall asleep quickly or you don't stay asleep. The next is sleep apnea, and the third one is called restless leg syndrome. These are the top three sleep disorders. People come and see me all the time. And mm -hmm. explain sleep apnea for those who don't know, because I had to uh, 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 do some more research on it. Uh, the word apnea means it's a, from Greek. It's, it's to, it is to stop breathing in the middle of the night. Oh. So what happens when you stop breathing, the body goes into flight or fight, and then it starts secreting chemicals like norepinephrine, jump starts you, that re re results in high blood pressure and diabetes and all kinds of problems. You wake up with a brain fog because the body's aim is to keep you alive and it's not letting you rest in the middle of the night. Uh-huh, and it's Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> so, good. but but it's not just every single di night that it's miserable. You can't fall asleep. It's long-term effects that when you don't get sleep, you say this is almost the new pandemic. Correct. So sleep problems don't hurt like a toothache. So we ignore it. But if you have these problems for 10 years or so, then it's going to catch up with you. See, people say all the time, "Hey, you know, I can." sleep when I die, but I tell people if you are on this path, <laughs> you are literally going to die because it's associated with blood pressure, diabetes, and not to mention if you're driving sleepy, you can oh. risk for accidents and a lot of other things. Yeah. That's absolutely. Now this book dives into everything, sleep for kids, mm -hmm. sleep for uh, couples that have issues, maybe one snores, uh, <laughs> a lot of different topics. But I do want to talk about um, if people come to you how it works. What is the process of treating somebody? Mm. Correct. So I have to see whether it's a primary sleep problem or if you have medical problems. So you have to rule out the other medical problems because that's going to affect your sleep too. So once I know that, then we can do a home sleep study so you don't need to be afraid of, nice. you know, staying in a strange place. So then you can diagnose disorders like sleep apnea and the treatment is so much more than just the CPAP mask which everybody is afraid of. So we have so many other treatment options. And, and you said one of them is just like flexing your tongue muscle <laughs> no, that's called using a device it's called excite osa it just literally strengthens your tongue right so the tongue's a major problem so we have to focus the tongue falls back and blocks the airway so before sleep apnea there's something called obstruction so obstructive sleep apnea the cause of obstruction is tongue 90 percent of the time so we have to fix so this is like a tense unit for the tongue it strengthens the tongue so that tongue doesn't become flabby and falls backwards. <laughs> you know what that, so I tried to sleep on my back for a yes, while because yeah. they said sleeping on your, you know, side gives you wrinkles. And I would wake up coughing because I think my tongue would get in the yes, way and I yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm back to sleeping on my side. Okay, let's talk about tips that people yes. can start tonight. All yes. right. So it's very easy for any plan to succeed. You have to have a schedule. So have a schedule to sleep. Prioritize sleep between 10 and 6 a.m., right? Next, no caffeine. Caffeine can act up to like 8 to 10 hours. So make sure 10 hours prior to going to sleep, do not have that Ooh, caffeine. Okay. So, and the most important thing is your phone. The light from your phone is telling your brain it's still daytime. So at least... Ideally, one hour, at least 30 minutes prior to going to sleep, leave your phone away from your bedroom. So bedroom is only for sleeping, not for worrying. Okay. Mm. Quick question. Yes. How do you feel about the snooze button? Let's say you wake <laughs> up in the morning, you're like, nah, nah, nah. No, you have to, I actually keep my phone in my bathroom, so literally I have to wake ah. up and turn it off. I'm done. Snoozing right. means you have a sleep, sleep debt, so you need to sleep more, you, or you might have a sleep disorder. What about on the weekends? I know for people like me, you know, you wake up at 5 a.m., let's yes. say Monday through Friday, and you yeah. want to sleep till 10 on Saturdays and Sundays. Do you think that's okay or bad? Mm. It's actually okay, but provided you have a good sleep schedule. So you're operating from a sleep debt, so you're compensating on the right. weekends. If that's the only way that affects your profession, you need it, I think there's no other way, but you have to do what you have to do. Mm, right. Now, okay. we haven't talked about the psychological impact. Like, what if someone has had, you know, traumas? And that's why they can't sleep at night. Correct. So that is, uh, so poor sleep worsens anxiety and depression. Anxiety and depression worsens sleep. So they have a bi-directional relationship. 
So just by controlling your sleep, you can improve your mental health. So that's number one, you know, if you have anxiety or sleep anxiety, work on your sleep and then you can heal your mental, uh, mental health. We heal in our sleep, so that's what we have to prioritize sleep. Right, right. Okay, right. musicians, we're yes. in Music City. Uh, a lot of musicians, like my fiance, stay up all night yes. and want to sleep all day. Yes. And you're, they say, well, we got eight hours, <laughs> yes. but it's during the day. Yes. Shift, shift work yes. and, and, and musician hours. Is, is it healthy to still no. get eight hours, but just not at the right time? It is, uh, <laughs> you know, people who work shift are, you know, are, are at a risk because your circadian rhythm, you know, our body has got a natural almost 24 hour clock, so which keeps on going. Now we're shifting the production of hormones, the cortisol, all that we're shifting. So that's a real problem. And you, and you have more time to be awake. And then you tend, you know, when you're awake or you're fighting tiredness, what you do, you actually go and eat. When yes. you eat, you're, you're going to make poor choices and you're taking high glycemic food, you know, food, and that alters you know, weight. So poor mm -hmm. sleep affects so many facets of our oh body. Gosh. So that's why I want everybody to discover the superpower that they have within themselves. It's actually free for everyone. Right. Wow. You say you don't even have to get the ring. You don't even have to worry about, you know, the app on your phone. Right. Start with the seven steps. Yeah. Start with the book. I, I was flipping through it. As I said, it's got something for everyone, all age yeah. groups, yes. uh, different genders, etc. So check that out. And to work with Dr. John at his Sleep Wellness Clinic of America in Brentwood, head to sleepwellnessinfo.com. And again, make sure to pick up a copy of his latest book, number one on Amazon today. All right. <laughs> all right